Hi. Hi. Well, uh, I do realize the, uh, the irony in this title. If I talk about reducing complexity, this is probably the most uh, complex speech now you've ever seen. So, all right, who am I? Uh, my name is Gabriel Mays. I run WordPress at GoDaddy. Uh, what does that mean? So we have hosting products, uh, managed WordPress. We have plugins like uh, Coblox. We have themes. Uh, my teams do all the kind of work. Uh, I also run our uh, WordPress strategy or vision. Uh, any M&A we do, like we acquired Coblox uh, last year. Uh, this is my lovely wife. That's my son Maverick. Um, his name is Maverick because my wife flew F-18s and was in the Blue Angels. Uh, he'll either uh, love that name or hate it in high school. So we'll see how that goes for him. Uh, I also, we're based in, uh, on Cape Cod, where my wife's from. Uh, I run the WordPress Cape Cod meetup down there. See if you're in town, stop by, say hi. All right, so what is in this talk for you? Uh, I hope you give you a better understanding of, of WordPress, uh, why it grows, the conditions of that growth, um, how WordPress is unlocking a new era of growth for WordPress, and then for you specifically, um, hopefully help you WordPress better, right? If you serve clients, uh, do better uh, client projects, if you have a WordPress site, make better decisions with that, or if you have a plug-in theme business, uh, make better decisions there. And just for context, how many of you guys have used Gutenberg? All right. All right, let's talk about WordPress growth first. So we know WordPress is big and growing. We talk about it a lot. You know, WordPress had 25% market share. WordPress had 30% market share. Um, but we don't talk about the conditions uh, under which WordPress grows. And that's a problem because WordPress's growth is not guaranteed. And if you look at the market, um, we can see that our competitors are growing really fast. And that's gonna make it hard to hit 50% uh, and subsequently 75% market share. <clears throat> so what we have here is um, uh, arguably WordPress's uh, three biggest competitors, uh, Squarespace, Wix, and Shopify. What we have here is 10 years of data of the trajectory of growth, <coughs> growth of those site builders. Now on the other side, um, that's the trajectory of growth of sites that those are taking from WordPress. Make sense? So they're taking more and more uh, sites from WordPress over time. Now, <coughs> this data is from a W3 Techs. Have you guys heard of W3 Techs? So what it does, it looks at the uh, top uh, 10 million uh, TLDs or domains across the web. So uh, Twitter.com, Facebook.com, they only count as one. And that's a problem because there's more than one way to be online, right? So what this is, this is a population of ways that you can be online as a business. Uh, you can be on Facebook, Google My Business, YouTube, Instagram, and what websites are, are only this green box right here. So what WordPress can possibly power is just this green box. And that's what Debbie 3 text measures, okay? So what this means is WordPress not only has to be better than Wix, Squarespace, Shopify, it has to be better than the other ways you can be online in addition to a website. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So, if you look at WordPress growth, here's a highly optimistic view of, of a market share. So there's two different uh, models here using non-CMS share as a proxy. So what that means is if you look at um, all the ways to create a website, CMS is like Squarespace, Wix, Shopify, those are all CMSs, then you have custom code, right? No CMS used for that site. And static site builders like Hugo, Jekyll, Gatsby, uh, those are all factored into this uh, CMS model. So, <coughs> This first one here, uh, this takes 10 years of data um, of non-CMS uh, versus, versus WordPress. And we use this because there's a pretty high correlation between the two. The other one looks at um, what are new sites using? Are they using a CMS or not? And they both put us around WordPress market share uh, capping out at around 55 to 60%. But that's highly optimistic because there's a lot of other trends that aren't really factored in here. So WordPress will realistically probably cap out around 45% market share if we don't do anything about those, those growth trends. Any questions on, on this? All right. All right, so the key thing here is that to sustain WordPress growth, uh, we should understand it. So let's talk about that. All right, so historical WordPress growth factors. 
Um, how many of you guys have been using WordPress for over 10 years? How many of you guys have been blogging for closer to 20 years? Long time. Okay, so very brief history lesson here. Um, if we talk about how did WordPress get so big, uh, the, the answer is relatively overdetermined. You know, it's, it's open source, there's no WordPress there, uh, it's the community, um, the, the LAMP stack is ubiquitous, it was easy to install. Um, all these things are true, uh, but the real key part of WordPress growth is that it was a strong market and had early product market fit. <coughs> so, if you look at the graph here on your right side, that's the trajectory of websites over time. If you look around 2003, 2004, when WordPress started, it was kind of a rocket ship. So WordPress captured a lot of that growth. But there's also the rise of blogs in the early 2000s. And how many of you guys remember like movable type? So they had like 90% market share in blogging. But then they changed their licensing. They had a mass exodus to WordPress. That's when WordPress got a lot of its growth. Then WordPress evolved into a CMS by adding pages, things like that, and it really took on more of that growth. So that was kind of historical WordPress growth, uh, but WordPress growth today is a bit different. So we have this strong, consist consistent organic growth across a large base of sites, a large surface area. So we have freelancers and agencies creating thousands uh, of sites a year. Uh, we have a plugin and theme ecosystem with 50,000 plugins. Uh, we have a very strong brand with, with high name recognition for WordPress. Uh, we have the network effects of open source, and we have a vibrant community. Uh, you guys are, are vibrant. And that's like all these meetups, all these work camps, all these things. You guys are alive. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So uh, WordPress's growth has changed as it's gotten bigger, uh, but now we're seeing pretty consistent growth over time. Now the key thing here is um, WordPress growth is fundamentally different uh, to the growth of, of uh, Shopify, of Wix, of Squarespace. So. Where WordPress's growth is organic, or there's nobody putting money into marketing WordPress, uh, site builders like Shopify, Wix, and WordPress. Um, so we have Shopify in 2019 uh, spending over $300 million in marketing. Uh, Wix, uh, almost a quarter billion. Squarespace, about $150 million. So combined over $700 million in 2018, these guys spent on marketing. They can put money into these engines to really grow their brands. Uh, earnings haven't come out for this year, uh, for 2019, but I'm guessing it's probably close or over a billion now, which is pretty crazy. So the cool thing here is that all this money, like WordPress is growing faster than all these combined. That's crazy. <laughs> that's huge. And that's because of the stuff that we all do, right? Uh, this community and this ecosystem that WordPress has. So uh, at the risk of a, of a bad analogy, uh, we'll go with this. So WordPress's growth is organic, right? It's, it's like a sailboat. Um, site builders are like a powered uh, speedboat. They can just put more money, more fuel into this engine to go faster, right? We can't create more wind, right? Until Elon Musk figures out how to do that, like there's no creating more wind. So to make WordPress grow, we have to better harness uh, the lift or the wind that we have. And I don't sail. Hopefully this analogy makes sense. Uh, okay. Uh, I didn't find him, but thank you for that. Um, so, sail use for. So with WordPress or organic growth, we have new people trying WordPress. We have those users succeeding. We have WordPress growth, right? Pretty, pretty simplistic. Uh, that's what moves WordPress forward. That's what helps WordPress grow. But then we have uh, fr fragmentation and complexity, uh, which is the drag that really slows WordPress growth. So when we introduce this drag, um, you know, fewer or users don't succeed, uh, WordPress first flows, and fewer people try WordPress. It really slows us down. And that slowing growth is what gives the competitors uh, an opportunity to really enter the market and compete with WordPress. Make sense? You guys buying that? All right. Because if you're iron, my talk's over. So that's good. <laughs> we can keep going. All right, so the key thing here is that uh, we as a WordPress community, we must leverage our strengths to grow. Uh, we can't create more wind, but we can accelerate by better harnessing uh, the wind that powers our growth and reducing drag, or this complexity and fragmentation uh, that prevents people from succeeding with WordPress. In case it wasn't clear, there you go again. All right, so the point of the talk is to help you understand um,
Gutenberg is helping us reduce this drag and accelerate WordPress growth. So let's start. Um, <coughs> slide. So this is a very beautiful, elegant, complex drawing. Uh, just just out of the context, so we have this spectrum of what people want, right? Uh, we have this little thing that WordPress does, and that gap between um, what people want and what WordPress does, that's all these plugins and things, right? And there's thousands of them, because people want all kinds of things. And WordPress provides this power and flexibility at the cost of complexity and fragmentation, because there's n ways to do X, right? If I ask you to build a homepage, we get 10 different ways to do it, right? You can do it with a plugin, you can do it with a page builder, you can do it with the word, um, widgets, you can do it with a custom theme. There's this long tail of needs and this long, well, a uh, long tail of ways to do them. And this is so hard that even smart people uh, struggle with it. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually on uh, Albert Einstein's Wikipedia page. You guys want to back check, right? <laughs> So Gutenberg really attempts to wrangle this complexity, right? To take these multi-purpose themes that are bloated, uh, these page builders, uh, these short codes, tiny MCE, which is HTML, and move everything to a very consistent approach uh, as a block, right? One way to do everything. So let's talk about uh, some ways that Gutenberg does this. And we'll start with um, how Gutenberg makes WordPress uh, easier and more performant. All right, so this is, you guys remember this, like how do you, how do you do this, right? How do you make a decent homepage with this? And for the first like, I don't know, 15, 16 years of WordPress, this was like what it was, right? Anybody who's a good developer, just use this and make a good looking homepage, right? You can't do it. So we go from this to this, right? So um, on the left here, this is uh, actually inside the WordPress admin uh, with Gutenberg uh, making a homepage. And you can see there's front-end editing. Uh, we have a, a gallery here where we just edit a bunch of pictures. You can write a caption there. You have a little, um, I guess, pull quote with some text. You have a call to action button, modifying images. Um, it's a lot easier to use uh, than the old uh, visual editor. And here we're adding a new element, we're adding a form. Um, this is this is Gutenberg, right? This isn't a page builder, this isn't anything crazy. Uh, this is just Gutenberg. So now, um, I'm gonna show you five different sites uh, that were made uh, with Gutenberg just to show you what's possible. All right, so here's our first one. This is a... Um, it's like an interior design uh, studio, dark theme, media, media image with uh, some text. We have a portfolio button here. Click on that. Here's a nice looking portfolio. Pretty decent looking site. Next we have a restaurant here. If you have high blood pressure, you probably don't want to go here. It's called salt. <laughs> so we have different blocks here. Uh, here's a menu block down here. Hope you're not too hungry. Next, we have the Sons of Anarchy website here. Great show if you guys haven't seen it. Other side here with another gallery. Uh, social media icons down here. Next we have Optimus Prime's website here. It's its side hustle. Some more pictures. Contact page here. Then lastly we have Michael Phelps' website here. Some layers in the background. Uh, so a lot of different designs, um, looks pretty good, right? Gutenberg's been out a year, not bad, right? Just getting there. Um, but the great thing about this, especially if you built a lot of WordPress sites, is if you go to the themes here, um, all of those sites 
we're going with the one thing, the same thing. And this is a free theme uh, in the repo, it's called Go. Uh, that's the flexibility of Gutenberg, right? You don't have all these different themes for all these different designs, it's just one theme for all of that. And to make it even better, that's not all. All those sites just had one plugin. I know, right? He dropped his money, he was so excited. Um, Go Lux. This is another free, so that theme was free, uh, and this plugin's free in the repo. Uh, all those sites just had one plugin. That's Go Lux. Like, normal WordPress sites have like 20 plugins, they take 10 seconds to load, a lot of load. Uh, we did forms, we did menus, we did all that stuff with one block, one plugin. Um, is anybody impressed by this? Anybody? Okay, if you build sites, like this is pretty incredible, right? And Gutenberg's just getting started. Now here's the, the, uh, the better thing here. Let me open this presentation again. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, we're doing a lot more with a lot less flow. All that with the same theme, one plugin. Um, if you thought about what a basic WordPress site is before, you know, we'd get something like this. Well, all those sites you saw, that's a basic WordPress site with Gutenberg, right? Way different. And the cool thing is, since there's a lot less bloat, crazy fast performance. So I pulled one of those sites um, and tested it. Uh, this is totally unoptimized, right? On $5 hosting, uh, loaded in 167 milliseconds. Uh, webpage.org, green across the board. Uh, Google page insights, uh, 100 on desktop, 98 on mobile. Like, for WordPress, that's insane. Like, I hope you guys are excited about it. This is crazy for WordPress. Because WordPress sites are usually bloated, right? They take a long time to load. Uh, but this is where we're going with Gutenberg. Because there's not, they're not loading a lot of overhead. This is all in WordPress core. Just some extra JavaScript and some styles, right? Any questions on any of this? What was your plugin and what did it do? So, the code blocks, yeah. uh, that was a plugin that's free in the repo. Yeah. It just adds blocks different blocks. So Gutenberg core has some blocks, right? Now this just adds some extra ones. Get the menu block, a uh, gallery, just stuff like that. It, it's all free, just additional blocks. Um, all the styles come from the, the theme. Any other questions? All right. So we'll keep moving here. <clears throat> all right, so in addition to making WordPress um, easier to use and more performant, I mean, it also empowered WordPress companies to be uh, more productive and create more value. So here's my beautiful illustration again. Um, a lot of what fills the gap today between uh, what people want and what WordPress does are page builders. How many people use page builders? You have to, right? To make a decent looking site, you have to use page builders, unless you want to build a custom theme every time. Um, I do it too. You know, we'll form a support group or something later. Um, but we had to use page builders to make WordPress do what we needed. And this creates a, a bad experience for users. And today, we have 30 plus page builders, uh, all of us solving the same problem in different ways, right? This is pretty, it's pretty crazy. And to, to see why this is crazy, uh, we can break it down a little bit. So, the reason why people use page builders is to be able to have advanced customization. <coughs> so what page, page builders actually do is they create this framework, whether it's you know, Beaver Builder with modules or Elementor with elements, whatever they're called. Um, uh, they have to create this framework in order to allow this advanced customization, right? To make for the, uh, the slurotic nature of WordPress. So the only reason this exists is to enable that advanced customization, right? But with Gutenberg, uh, Gutenberg puts this flexible interface uh, inside of WordPress. So now all these page builders, they can just focus on advanced customization. They don't have to maintain these, these um, complex frameworks. They don't have to support them. They don't have to do any of those things, um, ostensibly. We'll see if that actually happens. But that's really the next frontier for, uh, for design. All right, so um, <clears throat> instead of creative, creating all this duplicative frameworks, all these frameworks that do different things, you change them, they don't work together, uh, you change your theme, your site breaks, all this stuff. Um, that Gutenberg frees up all these companies to really focus on this stuff. All right, so what are the implications of this? Um, Gutenberg enables WordPress and the WordPress ecosystem to go further faster and, um, and be more efficient. So it provides these common services uh, that are blocks in this block uh, infrastructure um, for theme developers, 
uh, plugins, um, people uh, to leverage these things. And in turn, ostensibly, uh, this will uh, reduce fragmentation, reduce complexity, so people can be more uh, successful, successful for us. All right. We talked about this. Uh, but the important thing here is, um, I guess how many people are using Gutenberg regularly? Four, three and a half, maybe. <laughs> okay, like I, I get it. Like we're, uh, Gutenberg is trying to make it, right? It's coming along, there's a big gap there. Um, so what I'd recommend is try Gutenberg at least every six months, two releases, see if it works for you. Try a simple project with it, try to blog with it, just try to use it in some way. Um, it'll, it's getting there. Um, have your clients use it for basic posts. Try doing things in standardized ways. So if you were to build a new uh, form builder, uh, try using blocks instead of your own your own elements. Um, and then share your feedback with the with the Gutenberg team. That's it. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. So the um, the, the, the websites you show, they definitely they look pretty sleek and uh, minimalistic. And also, yeah, for I think for beginners, it's a super good tool to. Um, get familiar with WordPress. Um, yet, I think the websites, they, they look kind of similar. They all have a similar touch to it, which is fine. It, it's, as I said, for beginners, it's good. But I, I consider WordPress the biggest strength uh, compared to Wix and Squarespace is its complexity. Because, because you can always go one step further. And if I want to do it in a different way, there is always an option to do that. And there's always, you know, a different way to do it, even without programming, and that's where I think that WordPress actually has its strength by leaving everybody the option to go as far as they want to with it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as for, for beginners, I think this will be a, a, an awesome tool. Um, my question is just why does this open source um, software have to grow eternally. Like you mentioned that it's slowing down, but why does it have to keep growing? So great questions. Um, I guess the first thing I'd say is on your first statement, um, they look basic and simplistic, because uh, they are. You know, Gutenberg's been out for a year. Um, I, I I wouldn't look at this as, as what Gutenberg is, but that's a step on the way. Like Gutenberg's gonna keep getting a better evolving and it's not meant to standardize everything and take away the complexity but just to have a, a high watermark for a higher foundation more standardization because if there's more standardization uh, we can kind of build higher we can do more with this this thing because uh, we could say the same thing about uh, post types in core or pages in core or the fact there's even plugins right if there's always these levels of abstraction we keep building they're meant to do more not to really make things like more basic does that help a little bit right um, the next thing about um, does WordPress have to grow? Um, not it doesn't have to grow, um, but I think there's something about the idea of WordPress and open source. Uh, you know, juxtaposed with like the proprietary CMSs and what kind of internet do we want? You know, and I think if WordPress is going to succeed, um, WordPress as a monolithic CMS, monolithic app, is, is it has to die at some point. Where WordPress uh, can't just be this thing that everybody uses. It's going to have to evolve into different components, right? Where if I'm building an app, I should be able to use the user management component, or the media component, you know, or the editor component, you know. And those are just open source components to kind of uh, jumpstart everything else you could do with WordPress. Because if you think of um, think of Mailchimp, or Constant Contact, or Squarespace, or Vistaprint building a business card, they all have their own shitty implementation of an editor. Like why? Right? They could start with, with Gutenberg as a component and build off that. Right? So just trying to like raise the, 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 uh, the lowest implementation up a bit higher. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I hope that helps. Um, yeah? I recently purchased a template on Thin Forest uh -huh. and Beto. Is Gutenberg compatible with that? Great question. It depends. <laughs> you know? um, so, um, Gutenberg isn't not compatible with anything because it's part of WordPress that you can use it or not. Um, uh, what you're asking is, can I use Gutenberg with my theme? And it depends on the implementation of it. Because some themes use 
can use the, the editor, but some kind of great, like for example, for the home page, it could be just be widgets, how it implements it. Or it could be its own like page builder built in. You know? It depends, oops, it depends um, how that thing's built and implemented. So it's really hard to tell. Um, but one of the problems in Vado's having is their authors aren't really adapting to Gutenberg very well. That's a big problem they're having. Because there's actually a big gap with Gutenberg right now. Uh, like he was saying, like most of the sites are simplistic. You can't do what you can do with Beaver Builder or Divi with it yet, you know? So um, people aren't moving towards it yet. It's like that weird face, you can you get, a, you get a haircut and it's not like long enough to do anything with it, it's not it's too short, it's like that weird phase right now. Um, so I think we'll get there, but um, we're just not there yet. Um, so I, I can look at the theme after this if you want, you know? Um, but I can't, it just depends on how the thing's built. That makes sense. That was a lot of words for a very simple question, so sorry. Yeah, yeah I, I have GoDaddy and I use Gutenberg and classical things, it never occurred to me until you spoke to look for a new thing which I'm looking for with Gutenberg enabled. I mean, I just didn't think about it until just now when I texted it, and there are 30 different things that are recommended. So it's sort of like getting the word out there, too. Yeah, it's, um, and every time you look at it, it changes. Like, yeah. WordPress 5.3, like, um, was an awesome release, because a lot of the, the progress Gutenberg had made was rolled into there, uh, because, like in the future, um, all these things you used to rely on a theme for are, are now going to be like blocks and stuff. Um, not all things are great with Gutenberg yet. Like uh, 2020 is really good with it. Um, Go is really good with it. They're both free, you know. Um, I don't know any, any paid options that are good with it yet, um, but there's a great free thing. Like I said, there. it's just hard to find. It's hard to if you're not in that environment thinking about doing it and realizing. Well, that's how I should look. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, and the reason why it's important to have a Gutenberg first theme to use with Gutenberg is because blocks inherit styles. So that theme has to have the right styles for those blocks, otherwise it's going to look really crappy. Any other questions? Yeah. So WordPress is an open source thing. So mm -hmm. wouldn't that mean you would want a lot of people bringing it into? Gutenberg seems to be going opposite that and away from all these people who write these open source things for WordPress. Uh, do you mean, can you uh, say that again? So as, as an open source product, which mm -hmm. WordPress is, it usually you have a lot of people sourcing into it and giving a lot of input to what it is. Gutenberg seems to be building a core of, we're not going to have you build it, we just want it as ourselves. Is that correct? Or? Um, it's not incorrect. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, it, it's weird because if you think about WordPress today, there's a million different directions that it goes in, right? There's different ways to do this, different ways to do that, and Gutenberg is kind of saying, no guys, that's not right, standardize here. Um, so it's kind of like, it's kind of a reset. Um, I don't think it changes um, the open source nature of any of it. Uh, maybe it raises the bar because JavaScript is harder to write than PHP. Um, I think we'll get there. Okay. You know? But it's um, like the themes, like we were all saying. Yeah. You don't know what themes, what works with what, you put Gutenberg on on top of what you got. Now what you got? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's you're right. This is one of those. It's one of those times to sit with uncomfortability for a little bit. Right. Just like inside, like, we'll, we'll get out of this. You know, the hard part is behind us. It was getting Gutenberg in door. It was figuring it out. Yeah. Um, there's still a lot of problems, but I think we're on the right path. Okay. All right. Thanks. Any other questions? All right. I'm Thanks, guys. The, I'm, I'm pretty pretty new with. WordPress, yeah. but I'm trying to get the grasp of Gutenberg. Is, a, is it like an editor, <coughs> yeah. or is it uh, more like an application? Or so a I mean, that's a good question. Um, it's the new WordPress editor. That's how it manifests. But it's actually more than that. It's this idea that um, uh, like it's a new way to store the data. It's a new way to create uh, interfaces inside of it because you can reuse its components. It's making WordPress more modular, right? Because it's, it's essentially this React component that you can use anywhere. Like, like we're actually working on pulling Gutenberg out of WordPress and putting it in a simple editor for people who like don't want all that other stuff, right? You can use it really anywhere, you know. So it's a new philosophy for WordPress, um, but at its basic level, it is a new editor. But it's going to be a lot more as we go forward. Does that help? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, that's the best I could do. So I hope. So. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Sorry, just one more question. Yeah. One of the advantages with Wix and Squarespace is they have 24-7 support over chat, live chat, and phone numbers, but that's not available with WordPress from what I 
Yeah, so there's WordPress.org, the forums. You can ask questions there. Um, most, well, some hosts will help you with it. Just kind of depends on the host and how much time that agent has, you know? Because and a lot of um, hosts are, they're, they're paid by how much they sell. You know, so if you get a good one, they may and be able to help you. Um, otherwise, uh, the WordPress um, forums will help, WordPress.org. There's a lot of tutorials out there for Gutenberg and stuff. Meetups like this, with these brilliant, beautiful people. Thank you. There's a pretty active Slack channel, too, for WordPress. A lot of questions are answered. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Thank you. Is, is your, I'm sorry, is your, is your scope of what you are covering tonight, or the time allotted for, for what you have to cover, is it possibly a more um, demonstration of how Gutenberg works? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Over now? Yeah. Oh. Are you, is that cool? It, this is not time for Is that cool? I, I, you know, you, are you going to talk We had another presentation. Oh, I can hang around. Oh, right. okay. Thank you.